Hi everybody, how are you? It's Dr. Emily. I hope you're doing amazing. I hope you're enjoying your time at home and being productive uh, or relaxing or enjoying your time with your families as much as you can. Doing a short video about brain fog and brain inflammation. So you may know that I've been experiencing COVID. Definitely not a fun diagnosis. It's been a slow burn of a virus and an infection. Um, I'm now day 15, 14, 15 from when I first presented with my first symptom. Um, I'm considering today day four of no symptoms, although I still have a hard time breathing. <laughs> so it's very vague on like, when does the no symptom kind of start? Knowing that I'm probably going to have a hard time breathing for probably a month moving forward. And I have to use the steroid inhalers for a month moving forward. But one of those uh, other residual symptoms that you actually don't find a lot on the internet that I experienced, and then when you search it the right way, you'll actually start to hear people talking about it or certain articles about it, is the brain fog and the confusion and really the brain symptoms that go with coronavirus. This is actually with all viruses and all infections. So it's actually not limited or specific or very unique to COVID or coronavirus, but just know that it is one of the symptoms. So if you are or were or know someone or you know are, are curious of the more subtle symptoms of coronavirus, is yes, there's GI. Yes, there is headaches and sore throat and coughing and respiratory. Yes, there's like weakness in your arms and you feel fatigued and kind of a generalized malaise. Um, but brain fog is a huge symptom of it as well. And it's one of the residual symptoms that I'm experiencing. So maybe you can't even say that I'm day four of no symptoms because my brain fog is killing me. I just feel like I am like out of it, man. Um, so I want to speak a little bit about brain inflammation to educate you. And then you can use this information in any way you want to maybe help some people. Um, so brain inflammation, obviously this is a marker of aging, just in general, you actually see higher brain inflammation in those that are risk of Alzheimer's, um, some mental health, depression, anxiety, dementia risk. So if you just think of in general, we age when we're inflamed. So you want to keep your overall inflammation low. You want to have your gut inflammation low. You want to have joint inflammation low. And then you, of course, want to have brain inflammation low. Brain inflammation equals brain fog and decreased cognitive function. It also means uh, impaired or less functional or flexible emotional processing. And then of course that translates to movement as well that maybe you feel a little bit clumsy and awkward and, and things like that. So it translates in a high way. So now these are some of the most common causes of brain inflammation across the board. Stress, poor diet, autoimmune conditions, which are inflammatory in general, Poor gut health. Please remember the gut-brain axis. So if your gut is inflamed, generally your brain can get inflamed. High sugar diets. So if you love to have all your sugary foods, that of course is throwing your body into an inflammatory process, but then your brain is well. And then trauma can increase inflammation. And here's the big one, infections, bacterial, fungal, and viral infections, which of course includes COVID. So if you've had a high inflammatory process or really this cytokine storm that everyone is talking about, that cytokine storm interleukin-6 is going straight up here and giving you that brain fog. So if you're thinking, now I'm past it, I'm past the worst, maybe you still have a little bit of residual breathing or respiratory symptoms like I have, but how can you now get your brain recovered moving forward and it's not going to be overnight, but it's going to be this process as well. Now let's get our inflammation down systemically and in the brain to optimize our performance and to really take away some of that residual uh, impact of being diagnosed with coronavirus. So now what you want to think about is what anti-inflammatory supplements cross the blood-brain barrier? 
That's really what you want to ask yourself. So there's all these amazing, my table is full of anti-inflammatory supplements that I'm taking, but not all of them cross the blood brain barrier the same way. Now from a pharmaceutical one, NSAIDs, now that you're past the COVID diagnosis, now that you're kind of in the clear, you are cleared to start taking NSAIDs, ibuprofen, Advil, Aleve, things like that, that when, um, when you're in the peak of COVID, you, I'm sure you've read some of the, the media around suspicions of how COVID reacts to NSAIDs, NSAIDs do cross the blood brain barrier. So now, perhaps now, you want to explore the benefit of taking Advil, Aleve, Motrin, et cetera. Um, for reducing brain inflammation. Some other big players that cross the blood-brain barrier are resveratrol, so that's an important one. Alpha-lipoic acid, please remember that I did a prior, prior post on R-lipoic acid. So R-lipoic acid, see this is my brain fog, R-lipoic acid is, uh, has a higher efficacy and a higher bioavailability than alpha-lipoic acid. So R-lipoic acid, resveratrol, I already mentioned that. Now, curcumin, turmeric has low, low blood-brain barrier crossing. So it's a great anti-inflammatory, but just know that some of the research is a little bit skewed on how much it actually crosses the blood-brain barrier. Um, huge one probiotics. So please make sure that you're taking those probiotics. Your gut is that access to your brain. So make sure that you are optimizing your brain inflammation levels through your gut, your gut biome. So taking probiotics, that is going to help to level out that uh, brain inflammation. And then a big one when it comes to omegas is krill oil. So krill oil here, there's a lot of research around Krill oil being one of the best omegas that you could take, the variation of the omega, because it has the best blood-brain barrier permeability. So optimizing through those. So the ones that I'm taking are krill oil, probiotics, are lipoic acid. I am taking the curcumin. Again, I mentioned that that's kind of a lower um, blood brain barrier crossing and then resveratrol. Uh, I'm sure that there's others. It's just a matter of how many vitamins do you want to take. These are kind of the biggest ones when you do some of the searches. Yes, you can get them from diet. Yes, continue an anti-inflammatory diet. But the level of, of the uh, vitamin or the supplement that you need is very hard to get from food because you're then going to have to increase sugar intake or calorie intake. So I'm a huge proponent of supplements I've always been. Now, the last thing that you want to do as well, in addition to reducing the inflammation, is that you want to increase then some of the, the neurotransmitters that target focus, brain, optimization, memory, things like that. The go-to neurotransmitter that you want to increase in your brain is acetylcholine. So ACH or choline, um, anything that's considered cholinergic is going to upregulate that neurotransmitter. So the nootropics that are particularly cholinergic is of course choline because it's in the name. I don't know if I have my choline here, um, but the choline, so there's different variations of choline. Choline was one of my favorite prenatal supplements that I took. I think that's why Aurelia is such a super baby. So choline is really important in, like I said, brain optimization and acetylcholine um, formation, that neurotransmitter. So you're either upregulating acetylcholine formation or you're blocking acetylcholine breakdown. So those are anticholinergic medications. So you're either cholinergic or you're blocking anticholinergic. Um, now choline, there's different types. This is super important, please, is you want to make sure that you're taking the right type of supplement for choline. One, you can get choline in eggs, but you have to eat a butt ton of eggs to get it. Um, there is what's called choline by tartrate. This one has the lowest absorption and the lowest efficacy when it comes to upregulating choline. So you actually don't wanna take that one. There's what's called choline GDP. And I swear I had it. Oh, here it is. Brain fog. Okay, so here, this is, sorry, alpha GPC. Can you see this? So this is a choline supplement. This would be your second option. It has middle level as far as absorption and upregulation of choline. The best choline supplement that you actually want to take, I have it in New York and not in Connecticut where I'm isolating, but it is 
CDP choline. That has the highest efficacy when it comes to upregulating of acetylcholine. You actually want to take CDP choline with L-theanine is an example of another one. I take that one as well. Of course, it's in New York. So I'm going to start those again. Um, but I do have a new pept. Nupept is a nootropic that is also for increasing uh, memory function, cognition, reducing brain fog. So all of this, this class of nootropics, if you're new to it, the ones that are kind of in the safest or the most mainstream, Nupept is one, Nupept. Doing a choline, you could just stay there. Caffeine is of course a nootropic. Nicotine, that does not mean smoke, do not smoke, do not smoke. Nicotine is a nootropic as well. And then of course there's racetams, modafinil, different things that are kind of a higher level biohacking the brain. Um, but from a brain fog status post COVID diagnosis or other infection, I would look at the choline, I would look at the nootropic or the nupept, and then looking at these anti-inflammatories that I had Sorry, my husband's calling with my baby. Uh, just as we recap real quick, is taking anti-inflammatories that cross the blood-brain barrier, thinking about, about your gut and the gut-brain axis, thinking about nootropics and how that can increase it, getting your sleep, and then of course, trying to reduce that inflammation as much as possible. Keep your stress down. If you do this, then it will help you offset this symptom of COVID that there's not a lot of conversation around. So let's bring some attention to the effects of brain fog after or during, or maybe one of the first presenting symptoms of COVID. So it brings attention to what's happening and maybe you're experiencing and you're one of the mild symptoms that's totally confusing and skewing some of the numbers that the media is putting across. As always, please, please stay safe. Wear your mask. My mask is over there. Please wear your mask when you leave your home. Together, we will get through this. We will flatten that curve and we will be back to doing what we love and hanging out with our friends and family. Thank you so much. Have an amazing day.